regardless of the antiquity, then from there you can with the PowerPoint slide side by side, you can study. It's going to help you a lot in your distribution, okay? It's going to help you a lot in your revision. So we will start now. Today is about inflation. Seven up. Okay, so please, my advice for you is write small.
CPI slice cream. Okay, then so first thing you understand is definition straightforward. Second is computation. How do you calculate inflation? How do you calculate inflation? You, you calculate the percentage change in the price index, in the consumer price index, which is CPI. Okay? Consumer price index, slide three, okay? So inflation is measured by the percentage change in CPI. Okay? Next. Next level. Let's take a look now. Under CPI itself, okay? We can zoom down into definition again of CPI. Calculation of CPI and limitation of CPI. I don't believe all together in one match. Okay? So, CPI itself. So, you can see, oh, inflation is measured by the definition of CPI. Next, what is CPI? From CPI, we zoom down again. There's three, three things you need to understand. Definition. What is the definition of CPI? Second, calculation. How do you calculate CPI? Last one is limitation. Why is CPI limited? What are the, what are the bad things of CPI to measure inflation? You want me to zoom in? I can zoom in. Okay? Definition, calculation, and limitation. Okay, you can see. We zoom in CPI. Right? CPI. So CPI is the definition of CPI. Measure the cost. Okay, pretty good. The keyword, cost in the period of a standard basket of goods and services relative to the cost of the same basket of goods and services in a fixed year for the base year. So they tell teach how to calculate. So this is the definition. So it measures the cost. So we're not looking at the cost of living. Okay? But we cannot measure every single thing. So we have to choose a basket, a basket first, a basket, a basket of goods and services that most people in the country will, will, will be consuming. Understand? So we choose a basket. Next, we find the cost of that basket. Then we see how the cost increase over the years, and that will, that will be cost. That, this will be called CPI. Understand? CPI. CPI is measuring the cost of a consumer basket of goods. This is the definition. Typically, just memorizing. Okay. I once I show you the calculation, you will understand what it means. Okay. So definition, you just understand first. Okay. The key point: cost of you must write a standard basket of goods and services. Okay. And cost of the same basket of goods and services. Base here. So this is CPI. Definition will be better enhanced with calculation. Okay, how do you construct CPI? Okay. Slide 4. Okay. And definition is at slide 4. Okay, calculation. Total of 5 steps. Okay, you can write down 5 steps. I'm going to tell you now. After that, we went through this, then you will start to see the example. Step 1. Pick a base here. Step 1. Right there. I, don't, I have no space to write in. Step 1. Pick a base here. So every time you are, you are asked to copy CPI, step 1. Pick a base here. Sometimes they will tell you what's a base here. Okay, base here. It's called a year that you reference to. So pick a base here. Step 1. Okay, sometimes you can, can be given, sometimes you have to pick it yourself. Okay, step 2. Choose a standard basket of goods and services. Okay, printing of this standard basket of goods and services. That means, in other words, this standard basket of goods and services is something that the people in the country always consume. Because what, what is CPI trying to do? CPI is trying to measure the cost of living for people. So you can see, the standard basket of goods can be different in Korea and in India. In India, the standard basket of goods, a big component is given to rice. Okay, rice. In Korea, maybe kimchi will be inside, inside the standard basket of goods. Okay? In the Western country, maybe there will be no rice because all the Americans don't eat rice. You understand? So we are looking at the, the, the goods and services that we choose in the standard basket, right? In the basket of choose, differ across country. That means what we're trying to do is that these are the goods and services that the people in the country must, everyone will consume. Understand? So that is the standard. So the standard the basket, right, will differ across country. Like I say, India, a big proportion will be rice. Singapore, I can tell you a big proportion is housing. 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 So when housing price go up, you can say that the cost of living in Singapore go up a lot. In Korea, I don't know what, okay? In Western country, maybe it's free. Okay? So these goods and services are what the people in the country are, are consuming. Do you understand? Step two, okay? Step three, calculate the cost. Calculate the cost of this basket. Okay? In the base here. You have to calculate the cost of this basket in the base here. That means this basket, right? How much does it cost to buy this basket in the base here? 
Step four, calculate the cost in the current year. That is, how much does it cost you to buy this basket in the current year? Okay? Step five, find the percentage change. Okay? Do you get what I'm trying to say? No, no. CDI. Never mind. Continue on. Okay? Later, later we'll see. I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you, okay? Later we'll see, okay? We go slow, okay? The CPI for a given period measure the cost of living for that period relative to the base year. Okay? So the CPI is the price index. So what is the price index? The price index is a measure of the average price of a given class of goods and services relative to the price of the same goods and services in the base year. So this is the definition of a price index. Okay? So if I say, when the price index is 1, okay, 1, he said the, the, the price of the cost of living is the same currently compared to the base year. Because 1 is the same. So if the, suppose so okay, I give an example. Uh, suppose 207 is the base year. Okay? So the cost, the cost of the basket in 207 will be 1. Okay? In 209, 209 suppose the CDI index of is 1.2. 1.2, okay? It means what? That means the cost of the basket of goods, the same basket, the same quantity, okay? The same quantity in 209 is 20% higher than 207. Do you, you get what I'm say? Okay, never mind. I can give you an example. As usual. Okay. So this is constructing a. Okay? So step one, pick a base here. Step two, select a standard basket of goods. So conduct the consumer expenditure survey to determine the base year basket of goods. So you will conduct some consumer expenditure survey to know what, what types of goods and services does people always consume, okay, in the country. So to know that, oh, these are the common goods and services. Everyone must pay rent, everyone must, everyone must pay rent. So you know what goods and services that is, that will reflect the cost of living, okay? Select a basket of goods and services. You cannot, you cannot look into all goods and services that you've got it. Too many already, so you select, okay? You select. Step three. Measure the cost okay, of the basket of goods in the base year. Step 4. Measure the cost of the basket of goods in the current year. Step 5. This is how you create CDI. Okay? Cost. That is how much money is required. How much money is required to buy that basket of goods in the current year divided by how much money is required to buy that basket of goods in the base year. This will be your CDI. Do you get what I'm say? Okay? Okay. Never mind. We have more example. Thank God. Okay. I think the lecturers know that. I hear that last time I teach also the same thing. Okay? Okay. Real example. Okay, let's take a look now. So, step one. Choose the base year. What is the base year? 2000. Do you see here? Typical household in 2000. Base year. We choose 2000 the base year. Okay? 2000. Step one. Now. Step two. Choose a standard basket of goods. In your curriculum, it's always given. You don't need to choose, okay? So the standard basket is that, that means the people in this country consume only three items. Of these three items, they must consume. Everyone will consume one, okay? First is rent. Second is hamburger. That means a Western country. Third one is movie ticket. Do you get what I'm trying to say? That means all the family member, all the family in the country, they will always spend on these three things. When you choose the goods and services, you have to choose one that every member, every household will be spending on, okay? To reflect the general cost of living, okay? So, these are the three items. So, standard, step two, done. Always given to you in the curriculum. Step three, calculate the cost of this basket, okay? Of this basket in the base year. So, this is 2000, right? 2000, right? Okay? 2000, so the rent is $500, okay? Hamburger, 60, so this is the quantity you consume. Okay, key point to think of. This is what, this is where the loser point comes from. Okay, when students lose their marks, they don't even know why, okay? When you choose the quantity, you always use the quantity at the base year. Quantity, so we're looking at, we are consuming 60 hamburger. In the base year, you, you eat 60 hamburger, okay? So 60 times $2, so the cost of hamburger will be $130. Next, movie ticket in 2000. You buy 10 movie ticket. 10. This quantity is always the basic quantity, okay? Multiply by $6 each, so the cost of movie will be 60. So total, your cost of this basket, which is 1 apartment, 60 hamburger, and 10 movie ticket, is 680 in the base year. Understand? 680 in the base year. Okay, cost of this basket in the base year is 680. Next. 
2008. So now is the current year. Current year is 2008. Okay. So let's take a look now. 2008. So in 2008, the same three item. One, two, three. Okay. Renter has increased to six hundred thirty dollars. Right. Renter has increased already. In 2000, it is only five hundred dollars. But in 2008, it become six hundred thirty dollars. Next, hamburger. You still consume sixty. Okay. Sixty hamburger cost how much? In two hundred eight. Each one has risen to two dollars fifty cents. So the cost of sixty hamburger become one hundred fifty in two hundred eight. Movie ticket, how much does that movie ticket cost in the year 2008? Each ticket has risen to $7. So the cost of movie has increased to $70. So the cost of the same thing, okay? The cost of the same basket, the cost of the one two room bedroom, 60 hamburger, and 10 movie ticket, the same basket, now cost $850 in 2008. Okay, step four. Calculate the cost of the basket in, in the current year. Step five. Okay? This is, this is not CPI. This, this, this is not CPI. This is not CPI. How to calculate CPI? Show how to calculate CPI. Okay? So, step 5. CPI is this. CPI is you take the cost in the current year. What is the cost in the current year? 850 divided by the cost in the base year. What is the base year? 680 will be equal to 1.1. One point two five. So do you see the CPI will be one point two five. I need you to understand this. So in two eight, the CPI will be one point two five. Okay. It means what? It means that the cost of living has increased. The cost of living in two o eight is twenty five percent higher than two o o. Oh. Sorry, two thousand. Okay. 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 Can you understand? So that's why the cost of living has increased by twenty five percent. Do you understand where I'm coming from? So you can see, in the base year, CPI is always 1. Why? If you look at the CPI in the base year, CPI in the base year means current year is 2000, okay? So CPI, the cost of living in the base year is 680. The cost of living in 2000 also 680. So CPI in, CPI in the base year is always what? 1. Right? So you have to understand what this means, okay? So if I say <coughs> CPI, okay, please understand this, because this is what they always test you, always, always, copper, plus guarantee, always, okay? So, if I say base year is 202, okay? Maybe I, I try, I test you, okay? I test you. After I give you more examples, so I master this calculation, okay? 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, okay? Seven years. So, which year you want it to be the base year? Up to you. Suppose I choose. 204 to be the base year. So the CPI for 204 will be what? 1. 1. Okay? So 1.2, 1.4, 1.5, 0.8, 0.9. <laughs> okay, okay, start. Now, I see whether you understand. Huh? Describe the price level, cost of living in 2002. That means the, the cost of living in 202 or the cost of the basket in 202 is 20% cheaper than 204. Understand? Because 0 0.8 only, right? It's 20% cheaper than 204. In 203, it's 10% cheaper than 204. Okay? 205 is 20% more expensive than 204. 207 is 50% higher than 204. Okay, good. Next, how to calculate inflation? I teach you, okay? Inflation is what? Inflation is measured by percentage change in CPI. So how to calculate this? How to calculate? Straightforward. You take over here, over here, you take 0 0.9 minus 0 0.8 divided by 0 0.8 times 100. Who understand what it means? Percentage change. Basic primary school math. Basic primary school math. Who don't understand? Because price tag is 0 0.9, 202 is 0 0.8, so I think 0 0.9 minus 0 0.8, so increase by 0 0.1, divide by 0.8 times 100. This will be my inflation in 203, you understand? So inflation in 204 will be 1 minus 0 0.9 divided by 0 0.1. 0.9. 0 0.9. 0 0.9. 0 0.9. 0 0.9. 0 0.9. 0 0.9. 0 0.9. 0 0.9. 0 0.9. 
0.9 ไปถึงที่สุดที่ดีไหมอินฟลชันอินทูโอฟอร์อินฟลชันอินทูโอฟายวันพอยต์ตู้ไมนัสวันดีไฟไปวันต่ำพันเดือนอันนี้อยู่ตัวอีสระอีกันที่เปอร์เซ็นต์ตัวสองเพียงตัวอีโอเคตัวสี่วันพอยต์ฟอร์ไมนัสวันพอยต์ตู้ดีไฟไปวันพอยต์ตู้ต่ำพันเดือนตัวสี่วันวันพอยต์ไฟไมนัสวันพอยต์ฟอร์ดีไฟวันพอยต์ฟอร์ต่ำพันเดือนโอเค so your job is you must be able to calculate the CPI and to be able to calculate the inflation understand what CPI really mean understand compared to the base year So once you understand this, these are all examples to help you. Subsequently, you will see all these are examples to help you. Okay? So, slides. Six, seven, eight, nine. Six to nine is all about constructing CPI. Done? So if I go back here, six to nine, slide six to nine is all about calculation of CPI. Understand? Inflation is rising. It's called deflation. When inflation is rising, 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 it's
rising is called hyperinflation. Do you understand? Okay, these are called the names. And they only give you what? Inflation. Never mind. I just give you four, three. Okay, this is slide 10. So we take down 10 slides already, okay? Slide 10. Okay. So we have definition, names, and computation. 10 slides already, okay? So you can see CPI measure the average level of price relative to price in the base year, rate of inflation. Inflation typically is measured from an annual perspective. Annual perspective, okay? Annual. Oh, 208 was the inflation. 209 was the inflation, okay? Deflation, a situation where the price are falling. Understand? Price are falling is called deflation. How many I give you all three? Okay. Next. Arm four. Types of inflation, okay? Types of inflation. So you learn about definition of inflation, very simple, one sentence. You learn about calculation of inflation, very easy. Percentage is CPI, CPI trace down again into definition and calculation. I will go to limitation later because uh, the PowerPoint is not very organized. That's the reason, okay? Okay, next. Inflation also has its names. Types of inflation, types, okay? There are only two types of inflation. Please take note, there are only two types of inflation. The first type is called demand pool inflation. And the second is called cost push inflation. Okay? Demand pool inflation and cost push inflation. Okay? Demand pool and cost push. So out of all these, you need to understand what? You need to understand three things for each. First, their definition. Second, their causes, what caused them to happen. Third, solution, any way to tackle them. Okay, out of all this, you need to understand again, definition, their definition. And what caused this to happen, the causes. And last one, solution. Okay, yeah. Okay, definition, let's take a look now. Demand pool, okay? Demand pool inflation, inflation due to strong demand for goods and services usually occur during economic expansion, okay? This is demand pool. That means why demand pool? It means what? There's a lot of demand for goods and services. Maybe the economy is doing very, very well. Everyone wants to buy more things, right? Buy more property, buy more car. So you see, when the economy is doing well, everyone gets richer, they'll buy more car, buy more, buy more TV, all these things. You know, you learn in micro. When the demand increases, Right, consumer income increase, demand will shift to the right. When demand shift to the right, you will push up the price of goods, right? So, during an economic expansion, when people are doing well, the economy is doing well, people are getting richer, they see an increase in consumer income, everyone will buy more things. When you buy more things, you will push up the price of goods and services, and this is called demand <coughs> inflation. Understand? Do you get what I'm saying? So, this is when what? The economy is doing very well, okay? Cost push inflation, okay? Cost push inflation is what? It's due to higher cost of production due to more expensive resources such as oil. So cost push is hitting the supply curve. In other words, because oil price go up, oil price go up, okay? What you learn in micro? What can cause price to go up? Only two ways. One is demand go up, one is supply go down, right? So this is doing with supply going down, right? What you learn in micro, right? Think about the micro market. Demand go up, you'll push up the equilibrium price. Supply go down, you'll push up the equilibrium price. So this is due to the supply. This is hitting the supply. That means what? The cost of production becomes more expensive. Higher wage, more expensive raw material. Okay, oil price go up. So all these things will cause producer to produce less. When they produce less, it will create a shortage. Oh, continue. Okay, then push up micro. Okay, when they produce less, it will push up the prices. Understand? They will pass on the cost to consumer. So this is called cost push inflation. Understand, understand their definition. How are they different? One is driven by strong demand, one is driven by higher cost of production. The keyword is strong demand for demand pool, higher cost of production for cost push. Understand? So inflation, there are two types, demand pool and cost push. Okay, so which one is the better one? Demand pool, right? This is what happened. During the oil price crisis, in. a lot of government are struggling because the inflation is very high and it is not demand pool. Understand? It's not demand pool, okay? So
So economy may counter recession together with inflation, and this is known as deflation. So in other words, that means what? Over here, usually, oh, that means you have high inflation. What is deflation? High inflation plus <coughs> negative economic growth. These two together is called deflation. This is the worst thing that can ever happen to the economy. Okay? Memorize this first. Just understand what deflation means first, because a lot of things we're going to cover again in some other lecture. Okay? Deflation means high inflation and negative economic growth. Both happening at the same time. Okay? Then it's called deflation. So, this is slide 11. Definition you understand. So, definition you understand already, right? Definition, forces due to strong demand. Definition you understand how to define them, pure memorizing. Forces due to higher cost of production, right? Okay, this cost is strong demand, this cost is high cost of production. Solution, I will teach you later, because due to the slides, it's all over the place. Okay, next. You realize they go back to public inflation again. I am speechless also, huh? Okay? So, so I need you to organize okay, the slides. So that's why I try to do this for you. So the toolkit is here, so you can see. Because if you read accordingly, you're like, hey, how come from here jump, jump, hey, jump, jump back again? Okay? okay? So from here go down. Okay, let's take a look now. Calculating inflation. This is what I have teach you before, right? It's a percentage change in what? Right? So, inflation rate from 2000 to 2001 is just what? 1.771 minus 1.722 divided by 1.722. This will be give you 2.8. You get this number, okay? Can you add this up here? 100. So, straight away you get the inflation rate. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Because all, normally they, they get this, then they convert this to percentage. Okay? But a lot of students always don't do that. Trust me, thanks. Yes. So, why don't you just 100, okay? Let's get away from inflation rate. Understand? A percentage form. Okay? Okay? Inflation. <coughs> Slide 12. So, inflation again, same example. So,